Real Business Owners. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast. This is episode 65 with myself, Trevor Cowley. As always, Kel Goodman. Uh, guys, today we have a, a, an amazing guest for you. This is an individual that uh, we've been on his podcast. Um, we've got to know him pretty well over the last year or so. We, we joined the same entrepreneurship group. Uh, this individual is basically the definition of leveling up and mm -hmm. becoming the elite version of himself. The we've leader. actually witnessed yeah. it firsthand over the last 12 months. He doesn't even look the same. I know. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> his finances great. are probably not the same. There's a, there's a lot of titles to him as well. We've had a lot of cool guests on lately that have been authors, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. He has his own podcast. He, he speaks as well, public speaker. Uh, he's one of the coaches here in the Apex group that, uh, that Ryan Stuman has. And he's just recently completed 75 Hard. Guys, welcome Thomas Keenan to the, to the show. Thanks, guys. I uh, really appreciate the, the warm welcome, and yeah. this is one that I've been looking forward to for yeah. quite some time. Yeah, nice, dude, we've man. been looking forward to having you on. Yeah, so likewise. Thomas has a company. It's Top uh, Class Installations. Is yes, that sir. right? That is correct. Uh, if you will, just give us a, a brief rundown of what that business is, what you do, all that good stuff, so we can educate him on that real quick, just in case anybody can get value out of you know, what you do, and they can reach out to you there at the end of the show when we tell them how to find you. Yeah, 100%. So uh, Top Class Installations is is my main source of income, my main business. Uh, this September, which is coming up real soon, is going to be year number 11 that we've been oh, in wow. business, uh, which is a pretty big milestone for us. And we specialize in the installation of GPS tracking and dash camera systems in commercial fleet vehicles. Okay. Uh, so our, our actual client, the person who we sell to, is typically the GPS company who sells to the end user. Okay. Oh, that's okay. our ideal client. So what's the pitch? Like, let's say for instance, when you go in and you're going to present something to somebody and say, Hey, this is who we are. This is how you benefit from what we do. What are some of the benefits? We're more efficient than the other guys who are competing for what we're doing. We have systems and processes in place and therefore we can come in here and get the same work done in a third of the time. And we're going to have less errors, less, uh, e even data entry errors or clerical errors. Uh, believe it or not, yes, there is a blue collar aspect to the work of us manually installing the devices into these work vehicles. However, on the back end, the data that we collect in the field has to be on point and accurate. We're talking about SIM cards and, and basically the tracking device is a cell phone. So if we have one digit recorded incorrectly, it's going to screw everything up on the back mm -hmm. end. The customer is never going to be able to see where their vehicle is in the road. You know, it's uh, uh a common denominator I've noticed in a lot of just guests we've had, business owners we've had, like all the best businesses are, they go, they go really heavy on systems and processes, man. Like, you know, That's it's, true. it's a huge separator because it is amazing how many business owners are not, they don't have systems and processes. And I am not the greatest at it myself. Trev's been pretty good at it as well. Like I'll come up with ideas and I'll get things started and then he'll fine tune those systems and processes. And that's what's worked with us as well. But, uh, Man, I mean, what are some things that you've done to really dial that in? Or how come you went all in on systems and processes? Oh, man, how come I went all in? <laughs> I got really tired of being the one who had to do all the work. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, one of the first coaches that I hired, um, his saying was, you have to get the genius out of your head so other people can help you mm -hmm. expand and grow and operate your business. Like and that. that's exactly what it came down to. My business partner and myself, we had all this shit in our heads. Yeah. And we were relying upon us and only us to get the work done every yeah. day. So if it's not scalable, that not way. scalable that way whatsoever, yeah. uh, there was little to no communication throughout the company because of this. If one person received a sales call or an email to go do work, you're, you're replying to that person, but nobody else on the team understands or, or, or Where knows what's going on. Process. Where are we yeah. with this? Yeah. So we started implementing systems and processes and we actually, <laughs> we did it in, in backwards orders. So coming from the blue collar fulfillment end of the business. That's where we were comfortable. That's where yeah. I grew up. I grew up as a car audio installer. We were mainly focused on the fulfillment uh, portion of, of the, of the work. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to perfect how to install this, this shit into the vehicles mm -hmm. and we're going to do it perfectly. We're going to get really good at it. We're going to be able to train our team to get it done very quickly yet professionally yet with quality work, so on and so forth. So we started nailing that, and that really helped us propel the business. And then we, we kind of backfilled and worked backwards. So we're over the past, let's call it two years now at this point, yeah. is when we've really started dialing in our CRM systems. You know, we use Pipedrive to keep track of all of our sales flow at the front end, um, just getting the right people in to help us keep track of everything and just really build a solid business. 
You know what? What what you just said? Something just hit me. I think I think too many entrepreneurs or business owners are trying to perfect maybe too big of the picture mm -hmm. from front to back right. too soon, and maybe create systems and processes from front to back too soon. Which is when, probably actually backwards, right? You, you, you know, said it, we it, did it backwards, but it's because it, that's what most people don't don't. That's what most people do. They start front to back, but you probably should do back to front. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just chunking away at you know a system where you can duplicate yourself. Then now that you've done that, you can now focus on something new like a CRM. And then you go from section to section to section of your business and continue to make it better and better and better. And it's just this evolution. And eventually you look back and like, holy shit, we have a pretty fine-tuned process now. But it didn't happen by you fine-tuning it from front to back on paper first. You're like, hey, let's get really good at this and get granular with mm -hmm. it. And focus on this side of it, whether it's the fulfillment side, maybe your business is getting better at the sales side of it. Maybe your fulfillment's halfway decent right now. Whatever it is, whatever's lacking, focus on that mm -hmm. and, 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 and get good at the sales or well, get good at the real, fulfillment. Man. Some of yeah. the best money in business is your repeat customers or referrals from your customers. Yes. So if you're built to service them really well, but you're yeah. still a little chaotic on your sales and your lead gen and all that shit, like, you know, like, yeah, you need to get to that. You need to work on that. Yeah. But Dude, the best business is going to come from fulfilling people properly. So yeah, it's it's also the needs of the business too. So our business model is is very it's strange. So we go in <laughs> seriously. <laughs> it's beautiful though, um, and this is one of the reasons that if we were fortunate enough to be able to focus so much time on the fulfillment because when we go in and we sell a GPS company that hey we're the best option for yeah. you in the Northeast region. Once we sell that person and we prove to them that we actually do what we, we say we're going to do, we show up when we say we're going to show up, we show up and they just open the, the, the faucet and yeah. start turning the, 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 the lead flow on. So mm. it's not even like it's a lead. When they send work over to us, it is a, it's a done deal. Right. So, hey, uh, they, they, depending on the customers, uh, some companies give us emails, some co companies call us. Some companies have a fancy portal that we log into, you know, a couple times a day and check and see which work they've handed to us. Literally, mm -hmm. they've, they've spoon fed this work to us. So one of the things that wound up happening with that is you you get very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, oh, yeah, work's going to be coming in. Yeah. So you just stop mm -hmm. worrying about the yeah. sales aspect of it. And then all of a sudden, there's some changes in the upper management in that company. And all of a sudden, you know, your $100,000 a year coming in from this GPS company just went down to $10,000. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, wait a second here. This yeah. is this is a problem. And yeah. now you have to go out and start hunting again as, as a salesperson looking for that next vendor. So um, we started to intentionally uh, develop systems and processes to go after directly after the end user as well. So now mm -hmm. we have the ability where if, you know, let's call it uh, Johnny's Towing calls us and says, hey, I, I've got 30 tow trucks and I already bought my dash cameras and I want them installed. Gotcha. Can you service us? Yeah, we have the contracts in place. We have, mm. we have the systems. We have the ways to collect money from them. Uh, you know, we we have all that stuff in place already, and my team knows how to operate. You can basically pick up wherever they're at. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So that is a beautiful thing. Yeah, because I mean, this goes along with the intro in terms of how much you've leveled up just within the last year or so. What would you say the biggest factor is? What was the what was the switch that flipped for you? that made you really say, you know, I want to become the most elite version of myself. Were you at a very low point at, at, at a year or two ago? You know, because usually the change happens when you hit a low yep. and you say, I'm fed up or I'm sick of X or whatever that is, right? It's the same thing that it, it's been repeating. So I'll go back in history a little bit here. So about uh, my, my oldest daughter is now six. And okay. I think we spoke about this in my podcast. Yeah. My oldest daughter is six and it's a life altering event when you have a child. Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. this child comes into your life and you realize all of a sudden, Oh damn, I, I better get my ass in gear. Yeah. So that was number one. And that's when me, Tom started self-developing myself heavily, started reading, uh, attending seminars, coming to mastermind groups like this and so on and so forth that kicked off. And I got to a certain level, start hanging around with studs like you guys and other people within this organization. You realize, God damn it. I'm not doing enough. The best that I can do. Yeah. I'm not doing enough. Yeah. You know, and that's another driving factor. So it's it's very important to intentionally surround yourself with people who are doing bigger and better things than you are. So it that really, right there really just keeps kicking with me accountability out. for sure. I know that's yeah. that's one of my biggest takeaways too from from being in groups like this with you guys. Is yeah. 
accountability, man, because, you know, we need that. Well, it's just weird. I mean, when you get in, when you get inside of a group and you're watching people level up and they're growing mm-hmm. quite rapidly versus what they were doing maybe five years into it, and then one year, then they enter a group, they look different, they act different. You know, you've wrote a book since being in the group. You've started speaking since you've been in the group. Uh, you wrote uh, a book. Did I already say that? Maybe I already said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm just repeating myself. Uh, but you've you lost might be a, writing another book. Yeah. Though. You never pr- know. Yeah. Are exactly. You book? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty more of those to come. Right. Um, but you did mention one time uh, when we were here about the speaking gig. Okay. Mm-hmm. You did some big speaking gig with thousands of people, and you talked about some of the opportunities that started coming your way when you took a step outside your comfort zone and started speaking on stage. Talk sure. about that a little bit because, you know, I, I think that that's a, a thing that a lot of people fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you were fearful at first, uh, you know, when you first got on a stage or whatever it is. Talk about some of that stuff because it's yep. obviously been huge for you and your business. Sure. So uh, it all goes back to the to writing the book. And um, when Which I was, was titled. Yeah. Unfuck your business. Unfuck mm-hmm. your business. Yes. <laughs> um, so I was self-developed in myself, I was still working heavily as a technician within my business yeah. and I'm driving 30, 40,000 miles a year in my own personal car, job site to job site, servicing customers. And I'm like in audiobook focus mode. I mean, yeah. every moment that I'm in the car is an audio book, and I'm just like ripping through these books. So I'm backing into my driveway one day after, you know, 12, 13 hour day in a road. And I say to myself, that would be really fucking cool, Tom, one day if you wrote a book. And then I like smack myself in the back of the head and I'm like, all right, dude, it's, it's a pipe dream. And mm. th- thought went in, went out the window. Yeah. Fast forward a year and I'm, I'm part of Break Free Academy here, yeah. at Ryan's group. And I'm seeing, you know, him, he's at this time had written nine or 10 books. This one over here just wrote a book. This one wrote a book. This one wrote a book. And I'm like, and I'm sure you guys have had this, this too. Like, all right, well, if that dude can do it, yeah. why can't I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a matter of um, me not being able to write the book. I just didn't know the steps and the processes needed to to make it happen. Right. Yeah. So fast forward here, book is written, it launches, and some people, so backtrack again for a second, I come from the car audio industry. Yes. So people in the car audio industry, which I spent 20 years of my, my career in, um, start hearing about this, and this, there's a, a big association within the car audio industry. And uh, the president of this association get, catches wind of uh, my book. And, and uh, I've been after this guy. He's been on my dream 25 list mm. of, of people who I want to turn into a client or somebody I work with for yeah. like two years. I've been trying to email this guy, call this guy, get in front of him, and zero. I mean, Can't zero get his response. attention. Can't get his attention. Yeah. And um, Saturday morning, I'm sitting on my, my living room couch at my home. It's like 8.30. I woke up late, rubbed my eyes. Kids are awake already, and uh, my cell phone rings. It's a number from Massachusetts. I'm like, I don't know nobody me? in Massachusetts. Yeah. I got the family hell's... up there, but they don't <laughs> oh, call gotcha. me. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I answer the phone, and it's this guy. Mm. He's like, "Hey, congratulations on on writing your book. Um, just wanted to know if you had any interest in coming to speak at my event." Yeah, I've been trying to get there for like <laughs> yeah. two years, buddy. Check your email, bro. <laughs> Let me think about it. Exactly. So uh, he's like, all right, cool. Um, by the way, you got three weeks. Mm. Oh, wow. So, Damn, yeah. three weeks. And right. this is your first gig, and it's a big one. Yeah, you didn't one. just walk into a little 40-person yeah. yeah. room. A couple, you know? couple thousand people there. Yeah. So, um, all right, cool. I, I'm the kind of person where I don't just slightly do things yep. i've never had that mentality like you know even back in the day building my own cars for car audio systems it wasn't like i couldn't just go and put an amp in a sub box and i had to rebuild the entire car yeah you know it's a six-month project and it's either it's either all the way in yeah. or i'm not doing it you're at not all. doing basic shit so i start uh, by the way he mentions uh that this this speech my very first one ever he goes it, it has to be an hour and 20 minutes long Oh my oh, wow. god! <laughs> Your heart starts dropping. <laughs> yeah. and you start in a pan. You're like, you say yes, but then after that call, you're like, "What the hell yeah, did like, I just, what did I just sign s- up for?" Yeah, exactly. So he's like, uh, "I'm going to." They give you like a branded PowerPoint presentation because it's part of this association. It's got you know sponsors and all that kind of crap in there. He's like, "I'm going to send over this uh, this PowerPoint to you," and he winds up sending it over like a week late. So I lose a, a week there. The 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 week that I receive it. <laughs> 
I'm due to go away on family vacation oh, for the no. whole week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God. So uh, what, how much, what, what time do I the have The pressure is just mounting yeah. in the back of your head. Right. Yeah. So I say to my wife, she knows this is like a lifelong goal and yes. dream of mine. I'm like, thank God we're going on a family vacation where we rented a, a home. Yeah. And we don't necessarily have to go and do anything. We just get to hang, hang out, out at this, this really nice big house in upstate New York. And um, it happened to rain like two days that week. And it afforded me some time to stay back and work on this and mm. knock it out. So I wound up putting together this presentation. Uh, the week after that, I wound up going, come, actually, it's actually right here in Dallas, Texas, where we are now. Uh, and I, I go to this event. I speak. I had my copies of my book shipped down. I handed out copies of my book. Uh, I, bu- I brought my videographer with me who followed me around the event. And this is, I wasn't smart enough to realize that you need to bring your, your video crew with you. It was something that Ryan taught me. He goes, yeah. you, have, you need to make yourself appear bigger than you really are yeah. because people are going to be like, who the hell Who's is this that guy, guy walking around the camera? camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was 100% right. So, you know, here I am walking through this event and the, the amount of attention that I got from it was, um, People just wanted to come up to you and yeah. just say, hey, I'm so, you know, whatever. 100%. Who are you? Yes. Yeah, so here I am signing copies of my book. And I'm like, I'm just a car audio installer from New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? Yeah. You know, and uh, that kicked off other things. And, and you know, we talk heavily in this group here about power moves. Yes. And power moves are, are very strategic actions that we take. Mm-hmm. Okay. So right now we're involved in the power move of recording this podcast yes. okay mm-hmm. you guys have started your podcast i have mine that is a yes. power move writing a book is a power move starting a business is a power move writing speaking blogs, on stage speaking on stage right? writing a book correct so these these are power moves that we implement and you cannot expect to see a return on your investment for a minimum i believe a minimum of 90 days yeah. and in, in my experience it typically happens more closer to nine months to 12 months yes and some of the power moves that i've i've laid out uh, have taken years to come through. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't have the tenacity to stick through with it. Yeah. You know, so like, like if this, it doesn't come or, to or fruition even, or even start, man, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it really uncomfortable. Exactly. For if it doesn't come to fruition soon, you're just like, Oh, it's not for me. Right. Yeah. Like well, I'm going to walk. I didn't away get from the it. instant ROI. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you got to kind of forego that and not expect it. You, yeah. you have to show up every day and put in the work despite how you feel, despite if you want to do it or not despite if you have any listeners listen to your podcast. Yeah. So you ended up going to speak on stage and then you ended up creating relationships with other people that heard you speak on stage. Yep. People started coming up to you after you spoke mm-hmm. and then relationships started to unfold. 100%. So, so this association pulls me aside afterwards and like, Hey, we got really good feedback from your speech. Uh, we, we want you to come in and get more involved. We're, we're looking to add a fleet aspect. So, you know, the GPS and the camera stuff, yeah. we're looking to add the fleet aspect to the whole car audio industry. Cause they're so closely r- related to yeah. and what we're doing inside the vehicles. And they're like, um, you know, we, we want to bring you in and, and pretty much have you run this section of, of all of our trade shows. Mm. So up in COVID kind of really, Screw that Screwed up pretty good this show. year. Trade yeah, show thing. Uh, yeah. We got one trade show in this year. Uh, they're scheduled for four, and it's you know we're pretty much done for the year. But yeah. uh, we'll pick back up. I don't know when, but the whole intent was for me to come on there, um, set up the whole fleet safety section of this trade show with them, and and basically work out a deal where I'm you know making money to bring people in to be educated on the best practices to run and operate a service based business in the fleet safety industry. Awesome. Yeah. Good. One one thing you mentioned too when you were telling telling the story is is your top twenty five list. You know, yeah. I, I know that's something that that Stuman's taught, and I've never mm. done a full twenty five. I've had, I put a few people on my list, and mm-hmm. it's weird they do kind of appear into your life, and yeah. you get closer to these people. Like we really wanted to get closer with Ed and Andy and put them on our list, and the next thing you know, we're part of their group too, yeah. and, and doing more close things with them. But. Um, yeah, how, were, how effective has that been, man? You have a full 25 list. No, I didn't hit the full 25 either. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it stems from uh, um, Gino Wickman. Um, was it Gino Wickman? Is it just yeah. a book? Uh, no, it's Jeez. not Gino Wickman. Sorry, wrong guy. Wrong book. Uh, Chet Holmes. Okay. It, it stems from one of his books. Uh, he, he's like, you know, the, the sales guru from, you know, back in the day. And it was, it was called a Dream 100 list that he put together. So the Dream 25, it's the same principle, just a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. You put on the 25 top people who you want to do business with, who are your dream clients, who you Mm. you may not have that relationship with right now. And um, 
you know, I went through the exercise too, and this is something that is not done just once. It's ongoing over yeah. and over and over again. Right. You're always updating. Right. As you, as you check somebody off the list, you, somebody you add somebody. And mm-hmm. just like you, I never got to, to the 25. I think I capped that at like 19 or 20, and I, okay. I was struggling at that point. But it's pretty funny. Uh, the president of this association, he was on that list, and yeah. he no longer is. So, again, he, I wrote him down. You, you start working on it. And here's, here's the trick, right? And this is like one little micro secret that works awesome, okay? If that person's on Facebook, friend them. If they accept your friend request, you select them to see their posts first in your newsfeed. Mm. So now every time you open up Facebook, whether that person's writing happy birthday to his grandma or it doesn't make a difference what he's doing. Hey, I just went out with my kids, had a great day. You get to go in there and like and comment and say something meaningful mm-hmm. on that person's post. And even if they don't know you from a hole in the wall, now you're beginning to you're break. You're on the radar. Yeah, you're beginning, you're beginning to break into their ecosystem, mm-hmm. and they're getting to know, like, and trust you. Yeah, and you're getting to know them. It's easier to do it and, and approach them. I mean, how many people DM us on Real Business Owners, and their their name starts becoming regular, you know? Yeah. We got Mayor. We got other people yeah. that are constantly reaching out, you know? And it's like you start feeling like you do know them. Yeah, and you, so you if their goals are to do business with, it, yeah. it's going to be easier for them to do that. Yeah. So. The, the barrier of entry it, it gets less and less. when they're, If you send an email now, six months later, and it says Thomas Keenan, yeah. but they, they again, something's going to switch in their brain, and they're going to say, I, I, I know this guy, or mm-hmm. I've seen this guy. This guy's always commenting on my shit. Yep. It seems and, so simple, but most people don't do it. But the ones that do, it works. I mean, 100%. It's just your story is proof of that, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So with, with public speaking off the list, mm-hmm. you know, writing a book's off the list, you've got your podcast, you've got your business. What are some of the next things that you're trying to do to, to continue to level up? Because I think a lot of people will get to a certain point in their life and then they find comfort mm-hmm. in some of the things that they've accomplished. It's almost like that guy that talks about, you know, winning state in high school. He continues to celebrate that old win over and over and over. And if, if people continue to talk about their accomplishments of the past, they continue to, to get that euphoria mm-hmm. uh, from past accomplishments. True. Therefore, they never move on and accomplish anything else. Mm-hmm. So you've done a great job of, you know, accomplishing a lot within a small time frame. I mean, you wrote your book in what, three months or something like that? Yeah, start to finish with editing and all the artwork. I think it was a total of eight months. Eight months? Yeah. Okay. So again... That's a huge accomplishment, you know, um, and I think some of the things I think one time you when you spoke about that, you're like, I probably if I would have really focused yeah, on it, I could have got it done in three months or four months or whatever it was. Maybe that's why I came up with that number. Yep. But, you know, what are some of the things that you do to try to continue to find the next best version of yourself after sure. accomplishing a lot of wonderful things? Sure. So uh, it, it's funny when you work on a project. Right. Um, uh, I like to I like to set goals that overlap. Okay. Okay. So there, I had to write the book, right? Yeah. What I didn't realize about was writing the book. And this is where a lot of people who write books make the mistake. They don't put any marketing behind it. They don't build a personal brand behind it. So, okay. you know, are you going to write your book, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you have your personal website set up? I went and bought the domain name. All right, good. Right? So you're on track. <laughs> yeah. But this is a lot of things that people, yeah. they, they don't do. So I wrote the book and, and uh, it's in final rounds of editing. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I just finished this massive project of writing this book and editing it but I have nothing in place for marketing. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, call up my website, dude. I bought the domain, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> same, same as you. And we put together a badass website, okay. thomaskeenan.com, shameless plug. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I started building my personal brand, mm. building my personal brand, build a website, um, you know, links to my book, uh, links to my blog, links to my podcast, which was started shortly after that. And my whole intent and what I wanted to do I learned halfway through me, me self-developing myself that I loved helping other people succeed in business. Okay. I got to realize that that right there is my true passion and purpose and why mm. I'm here on the planet. Mm. So with branding myself, I also began branding and, and letting the world know that, hey, I'm here to help you succeed yeah. in business. Hint, hint, I'm starting a mastermind and coaching program of my own. Yeah. So that's what I've been building up this whole time and working on for the past couple of months and uh, we're looking to, to kick this off and launch it and have it operational by mid-October of this year. So all of this stuff is foundational work for that. All that stuff is a vehicle yep. to get you basically the accolades mm-hmm. that, that 
people are like, wow, this guy's done this, 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 this. Because if you have a website and you have no accolades, they're like, well, who the fuck's this yeah, guy? who's this guy? You know, but if you have a book and you've spoke on stage, you have a business, you've seen success, um, you know, obviously people are going to gravitate towards you. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, a lower barrier of entry. This guy has, has accomplished things that I've wanted to accomplish. I need to get close with him. I need to get inside of his ecosystem and pick his brain and figure out how he's doing some of these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, right before we went on the podcast, you shared a little nugget with us in terms of, you know, easy ways to, to write a book. Share a little bit of information about that in terms of, you know, how to speed up the process. Because most people think writing a book means mm-hmm. you need to tuck yourself into a corner in an office and you need to start plugging away until your forearms start burning yeah, yeah. and you're just typing, <laughs> typing, typing. And some people are like, well, I'm not good with grammar. Yeah. I don't even hardly read books myself. Mm-hmm. You know, or whatever it is. All these thoughts are coming in their head. So give them a little bit of a tip on how to simplify this process Mm -hmm. to if if they've ever thought about it and then that thought went in and out just like you talked about. Kind of share some of those nuggets with them. Yeah, sure. So number one is you need an outline. Okay. And it doesn't need to be fancy. I mean... My outline out, as, uh, as you need like your game chapters. plan. Yeah. What, what are you writing yeah. the book about? Okay. You know, and then you're going to, you're going to name the chapters and put them into place. And then you're going to break down all right, What are the, what are the five talking points that I want to cover in chapter one? Mm. What are the five talking points I want to cover in chapter two? And this can be, I mean, when, when my, I did hire an editor and, yes. and this is what I learned by hiring that editor. The editor created this very simple Google document with an outline. And when we were done, uh, outlining the the book, it was handed over to me and said, "Okay, get to work." And this is what you need to do. This is the next step. Okay. You don't need to physically go out there and manually type and and get yourself Popeye forearms. Um, that's the old school way of doing things. Yeah. We live in a in a modern world, modern technology, and everyone has this fancy computer in their hand right here yeah. called a smartphone. Yeah. Okay. You go to rev.com. Okay. It's fantastic transcription service. Rev.com. You put the app on your phone, and you can you can speak into your phone. Your chapters, mm. you send it out to Rev for transcription, and then you download it as a Word document, and you then edit that document. So, and then you can hire an editor, correct, to edit the document. So, yes. in a lot of cases, you can write a book by basically speaking it into a microphone, one hundred percent. And then at that point, you let the smart people, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, the editors come in. And do, do they change a lot? Do they say I don't like this, or how how does that process work, or do they basically just take what you give them and and say, no. okay, I'll write it. Yeah, I don't think it's good, but I'll write it. Or do they give you some suggestions yes. along the way? And Lots of suggestions. Okay. Uh, and believe it or not, um, I tend to speak too much. Mm. And the editors uh, made me cut a lot of the book. <laughs> so I like, shut up on when you're talking on your phone there. Yeah, I think my book had to be, for the genre of book that we were going for, uh, had to be around a 30,000 word area. Okay. When they were done editing my book after scrubbing a bunch of stuff, they yanked out over 40,000 words. Mm. So I had an absolute metric fuck ton of additional content yeah. that I could probably <laughs> turn into book number two. Yeah. Uh, so you also talked about if there's people listening and you have your own podcast or you're thinking about starting your own podcast, you shared a huge tip with us as well. Share that tip as well. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things that I've learned, and now I'm not smart enough to think yeah. of all this stuff. This is yeah. just coming from other people who yeah. are doing it and doing it at bigger levels and, and people that I look up to. Yes. People repurpose content right. all the time. Yes. And it's very, very important. I mean, it's, it's, I speak heavily and I talk about it in my book about being efficient with your time and where are you spending your time? Where are you getting the, the biggest bang for your buck kind of thing, you know? And you don't want to have to re-record or, or, or remake the same content over and over again. Mm-hmm. So what we do with my podcast, for instance, is I record the podcast. Okay. So I, I just like, you got a notepad here. I outline my podcast. I rip through it, whether I have a guest on or if I'm doing a solo by myself, I rip through the podcast. My, my podcast editor publishes it. It goes live. I then take that link, send it over to rev.com, have it transcribed into a word document again. And then it goes off to my editing team. They clean it up for me and we post it as a blog on my website. So I have continually, I have at least two blogs a week going live on my website. Off work that you've already done. Work work that I've already done, yeah. So you're basically becoming more efficient because some people are going to think like, okay, I need to have a podcast and then I have to have a blog. It doesn't have to be different. Right. Some people prefer like learning by listening. 
Mm-hmm. Some people are readers. Uh, you know, um, Kel loves reading long Facebook posts because he's, he's said that before. He's like, Stuman writes some long shit sometimes. Yep. He's like, dude, I just love reading it. You know, and then there's other people that prefer one or two sentences, just yep. a, a motivational quote or whatever it is. So there's different people for different things. And so you could repurpose the exact same thing that you've already done on a podcast over to a blog post. Sure. You also said even we can turn our podcast and some of the episodes into a book. 100%. Right? And we can have different chapters on different mm-hmm. topics. And it can be called the Real Business Owner's Book. Right? Just different topics that business owners struggle with. And that's something that we'll probably end up doing. Right. Yeah, know? absolutely. I, I guarantee we will. Yeah. Um, one thing I really like about our conversation today is Thomas is not like a guy that's trying to be out in the market like, you know, ah, hire me to be your coach or anything like that. You know what I mean? He's just been putting power moves out there like this to yes. grow his business and to grow his life. Um, and, and it works. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to, you don't have to try and be a personal development person, you know, to go out there and, and start doing these power moves to grow your, your main source of income, your, yes. your baby, your business. And that's where I think a lot of people are like, this doesn't apply to me, man. I'm just a contractor. This doesn't apply to me. I'm just a dentist, you know, whatever yeah. it is, but it, it does apply to those people, yeah. you know, and he's another, you know, good example of that. Yeah. No, dude, it's been amazing getting to know you over the last year. Uh, you know, it's going to be amazing to watch the evolution of Thomas continue to evolve. Mm-hmm. How much weight have you lost just doing the 75 hard? Uh, about, it, about 30 pounds. About 30 pounds? Yeah. yeah. How much How much mental weight have you gained from it's, doing something so something so difficult like that? It's not a measurable ROI. Really? Yeah, you can't measure it. No, not at all. And the, the physical aspects are the, the smallest percentage of, of the overall growth. That's incredible. So yeah. in terms of what? Discipline, focus? Everything. All so of it? Let me give you, let me just dive into it here, yeah. okay? Um, I want to know how it changed you. Kel yeah. did it. Kel did it. Mm-hmm. And he was, when he'd come into the office, uh, even like Jeremy and some of our other partners, were like, he's in a bad mood. Mm. And I and I looked over at him. I'm like, he's not in a bad mood. He's just not accepting mm. shit. Yeah. You know, he's like, let's just get this done. Let's mm-hmm. get it done. I don't care. Yeah. There's no excuse. It forces you to prioritize your time. 100%. Uh, I mean, you have to do two 45-minute workouts per day. One yeah. has to be outdoors. You have to read 10 pages of a self-development book. You need to drink one gallon of water. Uh, you need to follow a diet of your choice and drink yeah. no alcohol. Yeah. And, and take, and take your progress picture. pig. Right. Yeah. So, that's, that's the one I, people I, always actually, mess up yeah, on, Yeah, I've man. heard yeah. people actually have to start over because they fell asleep. Correct. And they didn't get that mm. picture. When I did it, when I, did it um, I made sure I did all that stuff in the morning. So yes. that all I had to do in the evening was my evening workout. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like that's the first key. thing, you know, the key is to front load your day if you mm-hmm. want to get through the program and, and follow some form of a checklist uh, since uh, I think I was uh, 50 something days into it. And Andy Frisella released the, the uh, 75 heart app, which yeah. would have been beautiful. But I, I built a Google sheet and little check boxes in there to keep track of myself through the yeah. day. Um, so I would write on my album picture. So I created a 75 heart daily picture album, you yeah. know, and I would write day one on my day one picture <laughs> day two. That's how I yeah. kept track. So if I looked in my album and I was like, Day three, I didn't take yeah. my picture today. Yeah. Hurry and yeah. get it done, you know. It's funny. I did the same thing. I have yeah. a 75 heart album, and I basically I just, you know, made sure all the pictures were lined up, and I would double check religiously every night. To the make speedo sure that you know. wore at the picture one didn't fit on picture 75. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I You know, one of my big takeaways from it was just how much self-awareness. And mm-hmm. I've, I've talked about it a lot lately because that was one yeah. of my biggest, you know, yeah. things that I feel like I gained through that. I was like, man. I'm so aware now of when I'm fucking up or oh, yeah. when I'm slipping or, you know what or I mean? Making Which excuses. is so valuable yeah. to get, you know, just back to where you need to be. Yeah. yeah. So on, on day three of 75 hard, uh, I was smashed in the face with a two by four of reality. It's yeah. the way I quit it. I was like, holy shit. So um, in my home office, I've got a, a caddy corner desk like this, you know, three screen iMac rolling up here. And I've got this piece of artwork that my wife got me for my birthday that says, I refuse to be average. Yeah. So it's one of the things I've always believed in is something that's driven me. And I think that most people are just average fuckers and it drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah. And, and no offense to anybody, but if that, that hurts your feelings, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. Yeah, exactly. So fuck you anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And fuck, you can go fuck yourself, but then you can unfuck your business. <laughs> yes. By, by reading, reading the book, book. Yeah. Yeah. you know, so uh, I'm looking at this, and I, I'm like, holy shit, dude. I've been settling for average for a long time. That happened on day and, three? Yeah, day three. In all yeah. these areas, it was like ding, 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 all these light bulbs going yeah. on. All right, well, I can either 
sit back here and, and sulk and do nothing about it, or I can make the moves. And uh, that's pretty much what I did. I got up and just and just started uh, putting some stuff into place. Uh, I, I knew I needed to do some things. Like, for instance, my mastermind whole thing was on my mind for quite some time. Yeah. You know, I, I had just received. Uh, so, you know, I've got a couple of businesses like you guys do, too. Yeah. And some of my, my smaller, I call them my side hustle businesses, yeah. got EIDL money. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you giving me this? But I'm going to yeah. take it. Yeah. yeah. So I've got this, this pile of cash sitting over here. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? A smart person would take that money and invest it into themselves and, and, and build something upon it. So I was like, all right, well, you know what? I know exactly who to hire to build out what I'm looking to build out. Mm. So I'm going to take this money that I just got this gift, okay, and I'm going to invest it, and I'm going to have this shit built professionally. So it is fucking amazing. And mm. that's what I've been doing with it and getting this whole, all the systems, processes, marketing, uh, automation, uh, and stuff built in and making this ecosystem because I, I, I'm very big about customer experience, and I yeah. want people who come through my program to have an amazing experience when they come through. That's what I it's want, all about. I want yeah. everyone to go through and have the exact same experience every time. Well, at the end of the day, dude, they might forget about what you said or, or did, but they won't forget how they felt. Yeah. You know, and that's really what it comes down to. I'm just surprised mm-hmm. that, that that hit you that soon. You know, yep. um, how many days did, it, did you get to before you were like, fuck, this is really hard. Because I, I think everybody's going to get to a point where they, they almost want to quit or give up or walk from it. Did you ever have that point where you're no. just like, holy shit? I had some tough days for yeah. sure. Uh, but I made the, the, the commitment to myself uh, on day one. when I Actually, even before that, probably the, the, the night before, I said to myself, all right, man. And like I said to you guys earlier, I'm either all in or all yeah. out. Mm-hmm. I made the all-in commitment, and I said, I am going through this. I am not doing this twice. I'm not fucking up. Yeah. And I don't care if I'm literally walking through the finish line on a stump because I've worn my foot off, and yeah. I'm walking on my ankle bones. Yeah. I'm going to finish this. That's, that's the mentality that you I You have to it. probably go into it with yeah. that type of mentality. To, in so order to, so to day one, you know, I, I, all this COVID crap happened, right? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I was always the kind of guy, I was going in, I was working with the trainer three to five days a week, you know, lifting heavy weights. So I was physically strong. Yeah. I was just fat. Yeah. And um, I go into this, uh, I had been sitting home now for close to probably 60 days of, you know, all this quarantine crap. You know, I live in New York and, and gyms are, are non-existent down, and, like, yeah, and they're I mean, still close to this day, which is a whole other topic that yeah. drives me crazy. But yeah, we can talk about that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I got, I got really tired of being a, a lazy fat slob sitting at home drinking beer. That's mm. what I was doing. I mean, I was still working, getting my stuff done, but I, I was like, you know, I don't want to go out of this situation worse than, than, than when I went in. I, I said to myself, going back to average people, average people are, are going to come into this whole COVID situation and come out on the other side 30 pounds heavier mm-hmm. or with their businesses in, in, in a bond. In a shithole. Yeah. Right. Or, or their, their marriage or, or their kids hating them. Something bad. Right. right. And I'm like, I refuse to be that person. Yeah. So hit 75 hard and it just pulls me through this thing. And here I am, you know, granted this whole Corona crap is still not over and done with, but I came out on the other side, a much better person Mm. mentally, physically, spiritually. My businesses are in a better place. I have a fantastic relationship with my wife. My kids love me. I get to see them every day, almost every day for the most Mm -hmm. part. And that's, that's really important to me. Mm. You know, one thing I heard, you know, we, we, we can be producers, right? Like we can get a lot of shit done and think yeah. we're doing great, but we're not elite producers. We're not yeah. really growing and hitting that next level unless you are, you know, getting, getting to that commitment like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Having that realization and just going for it, you know, cause you just, I th- I think people do what they think that they need to do. And then yeah. w- once they've done that, yeah. they're good. There's like, so many okay, of them. All of us have done it. Like yeah. we're getting shit done, so we think we're fine, and we're yeah. making money. We're doing yeah. pretty good. Right. We're living this life we've been chasing, and they're like, "But it's not enough," you know. Like, yeah, just you can't because settle. even if you're living above average means, mm. I think some people celebrate that. We've talked yeah. about that before. Is the six figure income the biggest thing or issue with a six figure income? Is people have that as a goal for so long, and then when they hit it, they kick their feet up. Like I've made it. I've done something. Right. And then they start rewarding themselves, whether it's taking time off or whether it's buying new shit, 
you know, and then they start blowing through their money and now their lifestyle is equal to their income. They have no extra money to invest into things. Then when an opportunity comes available, they can't do anything about it anyways because they're living a seven, eight thousand dollar a month lifestyle. They're making ten grand a month, but they gotta pay taxes and stuff on top of it. Mm -hmm. And so they start rewarding themselves. And it's the same concept of what we're talking about. Was Thomas still getting shit done? Was he still a, a successful guy in terms of above average? Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. But which a lot of people on a show that's called real business owners are probably in the same boat. You yes. know what I mean? They're in business, man. Like they are looking to, you know, continue to succeed. But are you, are you really challenging yourself the, and the, pushing yourself? Exactly. The question is to be elite. Are you celebrating the fact that you are an entrepreneur? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The fact that I am a business owner and people can kind of pound their chest and say, well, I'm doing something more so than other people. And then they rest on that. And then they kind of stop. It's amazing to me, the more people that we meet in terms of the groups that we're involved in, in terms of some of the elite coaches that we have, they're all just people. Mm -hmm. They're so fucking normal, dude. It's just insane to me because we get through, we get to a point where we start putting people on pedestals, you know, like that they're just different and they're not different. They, they're still just a human. They've just made different choices. Their choices then have a different outcome than the average individual, right? So you're, you're always going to get what, you're, what you accept, mm, right? True. And so a lot of people just accept average, mm -hmm. right? Because they're hanging out with average people. Even if they're hanging out with average people, maybe they're the top of the people that they hang out with. So that they're celebrating that. Yep. They're good. Mm -hmm. You know, my friends make 50, 60 grand a year. I make 100 grand a year. I'm good. Right. They're elite inside of the group that they in their ecosystem, the right. people that they hang out with. And I think that that's the, the, the one thing that makes pure sense is if that's you, get into a group where you're not the elite person. Yeah. Like it's insane to sit there and, and, and be in a group and we start talking about six figures when you're younger, six figures seems like a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then now somebody makes, says that they make a hundred or 200 grand a year. You're just like, oh, yeah, struggling, huh? <laughs> you know, or whatever it is, right? You you start again, your standards ultimately get raised mm -hmm. in terms of what you're willing to accept and not accept. And so I think that that's a very powerful message that a lot of you guys need to hear. Thomas just made different decisions than the other person. And now he's an author. Now he's a yep. speaker. Now he's got his business. That's he's doing like, I'm well. not going to tolerate this level anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Let's do more mm -hmm. because Again, instead of having cracking the beer, you went and did the second workout, right? You know, or whatever it is. And again, you need you you need to realize that every decision has an outcome. Every decision, whether you crack that beer open or whether you go on that next workout, mm -hmm. so it's the same amount of you know. You can sit on the couch for the next hour or two, or you can go out and get that hour or two workout in, and you might have the epiphany why you're out walking the streets or going on that run. Mm -hmm that changes the trajectory of your life. True story. You know, and, and that's really what it comes down to because some of the best ideas that, that, that I come up with is it's never in the office. No, it's not. Because you're, you're bombarded with yeah. stuff all the time. And so it's yeah. about freeing yourself from chaos mm -hmm. so where you can free think. And I think one of the benefits of 75 Hard is a lot of the time alone that you have the ability to free think. And I think that that then comes full circle into the self-awareness aspect. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So one of the things that I, I, I love the most about 75 Hard was the fact that I had to go outdoors and work. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it started out as, as, as walks, yeah. 45 minute or more walks, yeah. uh, minimum once a day. And um, basically what, what wound up happening was, you know, I've mentioned earlier, I've been a reader and, a pot and, yeah. and an audiobook guy, yeah. but I would go through cycles. So yeah. I'd read, 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 and I wouldn't read for a couple then of weeks. you drop off. And then I'd read, read, yeah. read. So... I go through the, through 75 hard and it's like, all right, well, I have to read a physical book, 10 yeah. pages or more per day. And you know what? While I'm on my outdoor walk, I might as well get some more reading. And so I was burning through audiobooks again. So here I am on these, these walks, which later turned into runs and I'm going through these books. And that, just like you said, you're, you're with yourself. I'm hearing content and information from other people who are smarter for me, who've been through and experienced more things. And it just lights up the energy and, and it's like, oh my goodness, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Idea, idea, mm -hmm. idea. Things just start happening. So And it just compounds too. You're alone in the car and you're like, oh, pull it over. You're like, I gotta write that down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the, 
I, I guess the takeaway here is is find time for yourself too. You know, I'm not saying go out there and, and break off 75 hard. If, if you feel like you're at a low point and you're not accomplishing much, then bite, take that big bite. Yeah. You know, you'd rather choke on greatness than, than swallow average, right? Yeah. And, to, yeah. and, and just bite off little teeny chunks. But I do think it's important and not enough entrepreneurs make time for themselves to focus on themselves because they're so focused on their business on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. And then when they go home, if their business is struggling, what are they thinking about? Their business. What can I do with my business? What can I do with my business? And again, we've said this a million times, and I don't mean to be a broken record, but you essentially are your business. And if you have the same eyeballs on your business for five years and you're not growing as an individual, your business can't grow either. You're not going to see a solution to a problem that you haven't solved in two years by remaining the exact same person. So you have to evolve as an individual Mm -hmm. in order for your business to evolve. I say it this way. You can only lead your business as far as you've self-developed yourself. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Totally. You know, and, and it's the individuals that are successful. They're not successful because they're the smartest motherfuckers. They're successful because of the, the discipline that they've created. And this program that both of you guys have done created a different level of discipline that ultimately leaked into other aspects of your life, yep. whether it's your, you know, being a father, whether yep. it's being, you know, uh, an entrepreneur. This shit will leak over into other aspects, right? Yeah. And so, guys, I think it's very important for you, and, and, and I've said this to other people before, how much time do you spend by yourself? When do you have the opportunity to even free think? You probably don't because you're at the office. Shit's coming at you all the time. You go home. Now you're wearing a new hat. Your dad or mom or whatever your role is with inside that house. And so you're constantly playing a role. Where do you make time for you? There yeah. is a role. You are a, you, you're the entity that will determine how your life ends up. And if you're not taking care of entity number one, those other entities, they'll start, even if you feel like you're giving it 100%, 100% of a 30% you isn't good. Right. So it's a matter of finding 100% of what you're capable of and letting that leak over into other aspects of your life. Yeah. So. Dude, amazing episode. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. Um, mm-hmm. How do they find you, bro? How do they connect with you? Uh, best way is to is hit me up on thomaskeenan.com. Spell that shit yeah, because yeah. it's so spelled different. I, I do not have an H in my name. Okay. My name it's is Thomas. It's almost. Tomas. <laughs> Tomas. Yeah, I'm T-O- half Puerto Rican, believe it or not. <laughs> there really? you go. Yeah. Get that Puerto Rican tax break, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that 4% flat tax. You got to live there, man. You got to hit up the family. <laughs> Start uh, sheltering a yeah. of money that way, dude. Have yeah, so uh, <laughs> thomaskeenan.com. You can also head over to connectwiththomas.com, and that's basically a landing page with links to every place on social media that I exist. Guys, cool. this is an individual that you definitely want to connect with. Make sure that you're watching what he does. Pick up his book. Yeah, he's he is the definition it's of power Amazon. moves. He's going through all the... The podcast, mm-hmm. the books, the speaking, you know, uh, mastermind. I mean, all of this stuff that we're talking about here, those are all power moves. He, yeah, he's been following the power moves. He's man. just doing all the right things, and all the right things ultimately end up attracting all the other right things to you <laughs> the things in your you want. business and your life, you know. <laughs> yeah. But if you're doing all the wrong things, you're just attracting all the wrong things. That's really yeah, what it comes down absolutely. to. It. It's been a pleasure, bro. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, appreciate you, great. man. Guys, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure that you, uh, you rate. Uh, rate the episode, review the episode, make sure you share it with a family member, a friend, a coworker, somebody else that you think that can get value out of this episode. And as always, guys, continue to kick ass.